0120146 is your SMS line at Metropole TVKA across all your social media platforms. My name is Simbalaja Charles Kiyage. Thank you very much for choosing to begin your day with a business I am. Get involved. Now, what you think you become, what you feel you attract, what you imagine you create. Well, both are saying that. Today we ask how decisive are you with your money is how long does it take you to invest in a commodity or business you've so badly been craving for understanding how one can cultivate a wealthy money mindset and how one can beat this mental setbacks we're joined by mumbi kagiri who is the founder and ceo of octree financial services group octree fsg mumbi good morning Good morning, Elijah. How are you? Fine, thank you. We're happy to have you around. Let's first begin by understanding of who Octree Group is, and after that, we table down our conversation this morning. Thank you, Elijah. So, Octree Financial Services Group is a one stop financial advisory firm where we help uh, our clients grow, protect, and their wealth. Um, and we do this uh, for individuals organizations, families with a well-building mindset. I love what you said, that grow and protect, because that's where the conversation is this morning, therefore. Now, let's talk about cultivating a wealthy money culture or a mindset, because that's where we're going to begin it, that you protect and grow. Let's begin from growing. What do you tell somebody, Mumbi, who comes to you and says, Wow, I have this money that I want to grow. Where does the conversation begin? Right. So the conversation has to begin, first of all, with various um, actions. Um, um, and also, what's your risk appetite? your wealth. So um, the conversation starts with types of um, discussions. You're also asking what is your current situation? You know, just give blanket advice because everybody is in a different place in their financial journey. Yes, I'm, I'm struggling to I'm struggling to get the last part of that, but I think now we're clear on that, Mumbi. Let's let me just phrase it in a different way as well, so that we also uh, get on with this conversation as well. The different types of people who may want to come to you, and then they say, "Well, Mumbi, I want to grow my money. Who mm. can grow their money, and who cannot? Are, are there those classes of people?" <laughs> <laughs> right, I get that question a lot. Yes. Um, what I say is everybody can grow their money. There's no class for people. Um, as long as you have some money you're earning in whatever form or shape, you an extra a thousand, an extra ten thousand, an extra hundred thousand. There's something for everybody when it comes to investing. Yes. So to answer that question, everybody can grow their money. There's an investment available for everybody. Let me talk to you about this, Mumbe. I mean, you, you've spoken to a couple of people who want to grow their money. I'm going to come to protecting your money, who want to grow their money. And then and they go out, and more often than not, you'll find that they don't. For you, what is the first impediment that you've actually seen in these types of people who say, well, I don't think I can grow my money? Right, right. And um, that's a very good question. Um, what I would say, the number in terms of impediments to growing your money is a poor wealth mindset. Um, and what I would say that is... is um, for example, if you think it's hard, if you think it's impossible, if you think you must have a certain amount of money first for you to start investing or saving 
or grow in your wealth. Yes. Then uh, that is what I would say is a, a wealth mindset because you're always seeing the limitations, not the possibilities. So I say the number one thing I come across as a challenge to people growing the world is the wealth mindset. Would you say that even as we talk about there being an impediment to investment and, and a mindset, would you say that in our economy, Mumbi, there are various places that you can invest as little as you can get? I mean, people are going to tell you, I don't earn so much to put on the side. That you can get that you can invest as little as you can get, then over time your money starts to grow. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely, absolutely. And I'll give you an example, Elijah. Yes. So an example is a money market fund. Right? So money market funds, there are money market funds which you can invest as little as five hundred shillings. And the good thing about a money market fund is what in finance we call the eighth wonder of the world, compound interest, right? So that with only 500, your money can grow and it will compound itself. Meaning the amount of money you put in in the first month, without having to add any more money, it will continue compounding. Principal plus interest and it continues compounding for perpetuity. The other advantage is also in products like money market funds, the rates are quite competitive, right? You can get a rate of between 7 to 9% even on your 500 shillings. So whether you're doing 500 shillings or 5 million shillings, you all get the same benefit of a good interest rate. On the top of that, it compounds. So, um, to answer your question, yes, there's an investment for everyone. And just as I've said, with 500 shillings, you can get started. I would like to think, Mumbi, that one of your biggest roles and responsibilities when it comes to telling people that you can grow your money has to be education on the available opportunities and the chances of putting your money here and there. Then after that, you can get a return. Is that what it is? And how much is that lacking within the Kenyan economy? Right, so actually financial literacy within our economy is very low, yes. um, sadly. Um, and we are coming across a younger generation who they're, they're not aware of the investment opportunities that are available in the market. Uh, but apart from the younger generation, I would say it's still a challenge even with the, with the middle-aged generation, the older generation, the youth, um, there's a problem when it comes with, to financial literacy. And people are hungry out there to learn about investments. But unfortunately, what happens is, um, and we have seen this in many cases, uh, someone promises you to double your money overnight, and because you don't know about investments, you don't have financial literacy then it's easy to get dipped into this sort of investment. So I would say financial literacy is a very big challenge that we have right now in the Kenyan economy. And so we are finding a lot of people are not able to, to save. They're not able to now grow their investments to protect it and not even consolidate it to pass it on to future generations. So yes, to answer your question later, it's a major challenge right now. It's really for us in the in the industry educating the public. Yeah. Somebody told me to ask you this question, Mumbi, this morning. That well, the easiest way to invest your money in the country, and you're gonna you're going to confirm or not, and I'm actually looking for your reaction this morning, <laughs> is well. Now here here comes the quote. Go buy some land somewhere, sit for five years, the land shall have doubled or even tripled in price. That that's the safest, most surest way to invest your money in the country. Is that it? Um, I would say it with Elijah. <laughs> I love that reaction. <laughs> Good question. So what I would say is this. Um, real estate is definitely 
very important yes. when you're growing your investment. But it's take a different approach. Have an approach of a diversified portfolio of your investments. So if you put all your eggs in one basket, the proverbial all your eggs in one basket in real estate, what happens then is you get a challenge of liquidity. So you have all this real estate, right? And the real estate, you cannot liquidate it in case you have an emergency. So have a diversified portfolio of your investments. Real estate is absolutely important. And for us at Octree FSG, we see it as a way, as a store of wealth. So you make money somewhere and you store it in real estate. However, it's not that all your money, you take it to real estate. And then also look at, look at the facts, look at, um, again, financial literacy. Is real estate really guaranteed investment? You double your money in five years, right? So again, I think it's go and look at the numbers and think what is the average rate of return in real estate right so it's not always guaranteed that real estate is sure right so i would say have a diversified portfolio not that all your eggs will go into real estate diversify your investments I woke, yeah. I woke into your office this morning mumbi and my first question is going to be where do I invest? I'm going to come to the protection part. So how, what is the process? Do you first understand my financial capability? Then after that, you take me through a course of investments. Then that's when I can invest? Or you ask me what I want to invest in? Okay, so the first thing is, first of all, to understand your needs for investments. Right? And not to just give a blanket, this is what you should invest. This is where you should go. So, for example, Elijah, you're a young man, you have a family, right? Or you don't, I don't know. But then you have different needs, diversified needs and different goals of your life. And these goals you want to achieve at certain milestones and certain steps of your life. So, I wouldn't just tell you, go and buy real estate and get maybe... What you need is something where it can grow gradually. And for example, someone who has a child wants to be able to pay their school fees every three months. So that's a way to grow your investment without it just lying there in the bank account with that and it's not earning you a competitive interest. So the process is to look at what are your needs. And then what is available to suit your needs. So it's a lot of customization to what you need, not necessarily just a blanket investment that here you go, Elijah, this is what is there, take this. There's no other option for you. Now, right. let's, let's come to the protection uh, part, Mumbi. What do you mean by protecting your wealth? What, what is that? It's, it's a new concept to me, I would say, as well. Right, so it's, it does sound new, but it is not new, yes. Eliza, because the main way to protect your wealth is through insurance. So uh, it's not a new concept, it's insurance. Insurance has been around for hundreds of years. So protecting your wealth is absolutely necessary in your quest to reach your financial goals. So let me give an example. You have worked hard. You've bought your first car. So imagine you've, you've struggled, you've paid for this vehicle, then with one accident, the car is a write-off. If you had insurance, then you wouldn't be bothered. You would just call your insurance company and you'd get uh, compensated for that loss. So it's a way to protect your wealth. Yes. So, there are several ways insurance covers that need. So can protect your house. You can imagine you bought a house, you've you know paid so much money for it, then a fire damages it. Right? 
So it's important to protect that. Or theft. You know, the items in your house are stolen. Where do you start? So a domestic package insurance is important for that. So we usually recommend having um, insurance to protect your wealth, right? And what we believe at OTFSG is that insurance is for protecting your wealth. Uh, life insurance is another thing, um, another vehicle to protect your loved ones after you're gone. Okay, so that you have not worked and built all this if you're the primary breadwinner, then your family is left struggling. So life insurance is also important to to protect your loved ones so that they're able to continue to live that you desired for your life. Right. Thank you. Lastly, Mumbi, as we clear this conversation this morning, what promise? do you offer for anybody who's interested in some of your most promising asset classes in terms of investment, even within this COVID-19 pandemic? Do we expect to see a proper return? Sorry, please come again. Yes, um, just what promise do you offer for anybody who really wants to walk into Octree this morning and tell you, well, I want to invest during this COVID-19 pandemic. What are the most promising asset classes that you want to actually push these people into? And do we expect there to be a good return even during this COVID-19 pandemic? Okay, so um, <laughs> it's interesting you use the word promise. Um, and especially in investments, uh, you can't promise, promise returns, right? Um, but what I would say is during COVID, during this season, a lot of people um, have suffered and continue to suffer loss. Yes. Maybe it's loss of a job, loss of uh, a business, loss of a loved one, right? So I would say during this season, it's very important for, for people to really look at internalize themselves, right? Look within themselves and and really think, do I have a plan, a roadmap to get through this, right? So in terms of investments that are available in the market, I would say you need to look at where you are at right now. Because for some people, it is you realized you didn't have an emergency fund. Okay, so during this period it is very important to start building an emergency fund right and we recommend at least one or two months of your of your monthly expenses at least just start with that yeah we recommend for some between even three to six months up to six months is even better okay because what covid showed people during this pandemic is you you don't know how long it will take so it's really a matter of looking at yourself and where you're at yeah look at your finances your financial um uh situation at the moment and really think okay so can i afford to continue having um three vehicles you know and look at now if you dispose of one vehicle which investment can you go in there's several investments in the market to look at that can grow your wealth so there are bonds, uh, treasury bonds, treasury bills. Stocks still give very good returns, even during this COVID period. Um, there's the money market funds that I mentioned earlier. Um, so, and real estate, right, is still not um, a, a write-off in terms of investment. So look at that landscape, but also look at yourself and what you're really able to do. So we have a financial plan. We are offering couples during this Valentine season <laughs> that um, uh, we're offering 10% off financial planning services for couples during this Valentine season. The offer runs all the way until February, end of February. And we're happy to work couples, even individuals. You can gift yourself, you know, you can love yourself and gift yourself a financial plan. So, and we can walk you through various investment opportunities that are available to you and according to your needs. Yes. So, 
Pretty That's much. what we can do. Mumbe Kagiri, founder and CEO, Octree Financial Services Group. Thank you very much for taking your time this morning to speak to Metropole Television. We quite value you appearing here today. Thank you. All right, on that note, we take a short break here on Business AM. Once we come back, top Business AM business news that you're waking up to this morning.